then done too much uh, on uh, my brewing um, today. It's all been about distilling and, and building stills. So I should um, just start climbing into that. Um, this is uh, a nasty down and dirty sugar wash that's uh, been pitched. I, I, I didn't have a presence of mind to make a video of it, but I can do that in the future. I'll start doing some more things on, on full grain brewing. Um, you can see it's up to 32 now. This was pitched around 29, 30 degrees. Uh, settle down, Spuddy. Um, and it's, it's just the yeast activity has kicked off and uh, raised the temperature by a couple of degrees. Uh, there's a point where, where these things are, are no more use. <laughs> you just go for a uh, cube in a jar. That's about a 120 litre barrel there. Uh, as I say, this is nothing flash. I just wanted some um, very high alcohol content uh, wash to um, run through my reflux column. The wash was, as I say, a really down and dirty nasty sugar wash. Um, I had 40 kg of uh, sugar dissolved in 100 litres of, uh, of water and I, I get my water from a, um, a artesian sort of well uh, so the, the water is very very clean it's been filtered naturally for, for God knows how many years um, it's a very good quality water um, so yeah 40, 40, 40 kg and 100 litres which is obviously uh, 400 grams a litre sugar dissolved in there, um, which is incredibly high. It's enough to give me, hopefully, around 18-20% alcohol by volume in that wash, which just means I'm going to get a, a nice yield when I um, distill it out. Uh, I wouldn't normally do it this way. I've got some fairly aggressive yeast. I would have withstand quite a high osmotic pressure, which means it can stand the the um, pressure of the sugar solution and then later on it can withstand the pressure of the alcohol that it, that's creating in solution and it, it could potentially ferment out to about 20 degrees um, there's no craft in this <laughs> uh, there's a few nutrients in the barrel there for the, for the yeast to, to climb into as well um, this is nothing like raw grain brewing I do um, but again I'll, I'll show, show some of that later on uh, when I start doing some more of that, it's coming into summer here, which means the temperature's up and uh, my fermentations are not likely to stall, um, which has been my problem over winter. It's, it, without having a lot of um, access to constant electricity and heating belts, um, trying to ferment stuff out is a, a waste of time here over winter. So I'm going for it now that summer, making, making hay while the sun's shining. So yeah, um, that's where I'm at with this. This is about uh, two days after I put it down. Um, yeah, about a day and a half. Day and a half after I, I, I pitched the yeast, um, and it's still it's still amped by about two degrees. So that there's, as you can see, there's a ton of ton of uh, yeast activity in there. If I pop the plug, you might just look. I've left a very little headspace in here. You might be able to see some of the action going on there. Happy, happy yeast, doing happy, happy things. The nice thing is that every time there's gas coming out of it, it's uh, reciprocal for the alcohol being created in that drum, the barrel. The um, sugar I use for, for this is uh, caster sugar. Um, so it's similar to, similar to table sugar, it's just a, a sucrose, but uh, just because of the nature of it, it dissolves a lot more readily um, in, in water. You don't have to heat the water up quite so much and agitate it and whatever. Uh, you normally do with, with a, a table sugar, um, that the caster sugar, you pour it in, you can see it's starting to dissolve without without heating the liquid, to, uh, the, the water too much. Um, I tend to make quite a thick syrup with it, almost like you're going to do a jam or something, and then um, pour it into the uh, the water that I've got that 
cold water I've got uh, in my uh, barrel and um, try and reach a sort of a happy medium for the temperature, starting temperature that way. There's a whole bunch of sugars available, different ranges of them. Um, there's, there's regular table table sugar, uh, white sugar. Uh, there's the caster sugar that I've used in this. There's um, soft brown sugars, raw sugars, which is, is pretty comparable to just a, a table sugar. Um, there's the, the darker brown sugars, um, I tend to use if I'm trying to fortify a rum a bit more. Um, uh, I, I don't go too nuts adding sugar into rum, I want all that molasses flavour, but a dark sugar can, can help that. Um, and then there's all, all the way through to uh, dextrose, which is, is usually very expensive. Dextrose um, comes in around, depending where I'm, where I'm looking at it, because I, I tend to buy, it, buy everything in 25 kg bags. Um, dextrose is almost double uh, the price of um, caster sugar or table sugar usually and there's not as much um, bang for your buck with dextrose um, it's, it doesn't have the, the sugar content and I think you uh, it's been a long time since I've used dextrose but um, you end up having to add about 1.4 times as much I think from memory I'm pro probably wrong on that but uh, as you would normally with a with a, a regular sucrose sugar, um, but it ferments out nice and clean. I've, I've only used it a couple of times just because of the fact that it is so expensive. But so yeah, you've got all, all those different range of, of prices there. Um, so I just went with twenty five uh, twenty five dollars a sack of um, cast sugar, which is a dollar dollar a kg. Uh, I'd buy it from a bulk um, foods emporium. You'll never find, well, in New Zealand anyway, you'll never find dollar a kg uh, sugar on, a, on a, a supermarket shelf. They always try and gouge you quite a bit, so um, shop around. And if you're new to distilling um, and, and brewing for distilling, uh, for your, your first run, I'd, your first batch, I'd, I'd recommend um, a sugar wash. It's, it's down and dirty, it's simple. There's not a lot that can go wrong you know, in comparison with, with doing something like all grain conversions, uh, which you, you need to you know, do, do your reading and your homework before you, you crack into one of those, because it's, it's not so much the expense uh, if you're doing corn whiskey or something, corn's quite cheap, but um, just the investment in your time and, and grinding corn or, or um, the effort that goes into to making something with an all grain conversion. Um, is quite large if, you, if you're just finding your way and, and learning how to run a still. Cracking through with a, a sugar wash, um, there's, there's no shame in that at all. Uh, and grab yourself some sugar, um, even even some turbo yeast, uh, and, and just, <laughs> a lot of people are going to spurn that one or, or have some uh, nasty comments about that, but if it makes life easier for you and you're, you're learning this um, from scratch, Turbo, there's nothing wrong with turbo yeast, it'll help you find your way and then you can start branching out and experimenting with other yeasts uh, once you know what you're doing and you've actually had a had a successful um, brew and a, and a successful um, distillation because there's nothing, I, I've spoken to a few people that have um, become very disheartened where things have gone wrong uh, on their, their first or second run. Um, and they, they kind of lose interest or start start losing interest um, when things don't work out. Well, make it easy for yourself. F find out what works and then, then start branching out and, and experimenting from there. Thanks, bird. And uh, here's a down and dirty sugar wash uh, a couple of weeks on. Notice I've just put the, the little um, earlock back in there. And um, it stopped. Stop fermenting. Um, majority of the ferment takes place in the first week, and then it sort of tails off. And uh, sure, we're about two or three weeks on here. Um, it's all done and dusted within the first two weeks, and I just leave it to um, to settle. Uh, you could mix some findings or, or wrapping material on there, and um, that would help um, settle any, any kind of yeast. Uh, cells or, or um, particle material in there and allow you to distill it a lot faster. I just, I just prefer to leave it to, to sit for a bit. Um, what we're looking at and looking for now, I didn't show you when I first um, set this up to ferment, uh, but when we started our um, brewing hydrometer 
was uh, up around here. And uh, we'll see where we're at now. Hopefully we're down around one or below. which is not the best, I would have preferred it to ferment uh, right out dry, but um, there was a lot of sugar in that thing. Anyway, what I do now is, um, you can see it's all starting to, to uh, settle all the, all the particular, particular material settles to the bottom, and then I um, drain off what's left, and that's what I uh, take away and distill into what will hopefully be quite a neutral vodka. I did have some questions from a guy I've sold some uh, distilling equipment to. Um, <laughs> he rang up, um, I won't mention any names, and uh, was complaining that his um, ferment uh, for his wash um, was reading zero alcohol. I uh, couldn't understand what he was meaning, uh, uh, what he was on about, and I asked him a few questions and I clicked he was using a um, alchemeter instead of a brewing hydrometer. Uh, big difference, so the, the alchemeter just measures water and alcohol in solution, which is what you have in your parrot when you're distilling, and I, I'm, I'm not going to tell people about the sake eggs, so most, most people know this, just to, just to clarify, because there's obviously are some people that haven't got the, haven't got the message there. Um, a brewing hydrometer like this one is what you use for measuring your ferment. Um, you start off with your specific, specific gravity, your initial gravity reading, and your final gravity reading. Um, and then you do a calculation and you work out your projected sort of um, alcohol content from there. Um, they have a they're, they're different from an alchemeter, or the, the, the confusing thing for that guy was he bought an alchem alchemeter, uh, it's called a spirit and trails hydrometer. So he told someone in a brewing shop he needed a hydrometer and, and grabbed that, and that's what he got, which was unfortunate. Um, I don't know if this camera's going to focus. What um, what the uh, brewing hydrometer will re give you is um, three. Usually, they usually got three, three different readings, gradations. This is really bad. Sorry, the camera's not going to focus on that. Um, you've got a um, projected potential alcohol by volume um, on on one one calibration. You've got um, the amount of sugar in solution uh, down here, and then the next one around here is uh, specific gravity which you use for calculating your, your, your ballpark alcohol content of what's in your wash. Sorry the camera's not going not to show focus on that very well. Oh well. Um, yeah so difference. Um, brewing hydrometer is not an alchemeter. <laughs> um, but hey that's all learning curves. Some people jump in boots and all and, and kind of miss the first turn and uh, so that's the sort of situation you get. But yeah, that's, um, that's that fermented out. Uh, I'll let it, let it settle a bit more and I'll rack it off and um, throw it into the still with the uh, reflux column. We'll have a, have a go with that in about a week or so.